Hello and welcome to Herbal History. In this episode, we'll cover a herb with a long and sordid history, Datura. Just as a preamble, based on what I've read and what I've learned, this herb is just as dangerous, or even more dangerous, than heroin. Do not use! Now that that's out of the way, in this episode, we'll cover the biology, ethnobotany, and current uses of Datura. We'll start with the botany of this plant. Datura is a group consisting of three genera in the Solanaceae family. These genera include Datura, of which the tribe is named after, Bergmansia, and Lochroma. The Datura genus consists of 14 species and several hybrids, but Mexico and South America is where these species get the most use. In Mexico, Datura discolor and Datura strandinum are the most common species found. In the 16th century, several species of Datura were also introduced to Spain and Europe. Now that that's out of the way, get ready because it gets crazier and crazier from here. The Datura genus has a long history in Mexico, as well as the Aboriginal tribes of America as well. The use of Datura is dated to be as old as 5,000 years, where it's used as a medical and mystic treatment. There are also various documents found that depict the use of Datura in psychoactive beverage making for rituals that include self-sacrifice and sexual abstinence, long fasting, and various other religious rituals. The psychoactive elements of this plant were also used to communicate with gods and non-human entities, sometimes to obtain knowledge of curing different diseases. When the Spaniards came over, they assumed that the trip they were experiencing was of a deal with the devil. Other cultures, such as the Nahoa, used this to treat different diseases, such as gout. Although most of the species of Datura are found in South America, natively, Arabic texts from the 9th to 14th centuries described at least one Datura species, indicating that there is at least one Datura species with an old world origin. In the 16th century, several herbalists mentioned Datura as being a very poisonous plant, but also recommended it in small doses to treat gout and affected wounds. Various people who practiced certain types of witchcraft mixed this plant with other hallucinogenic plants such as mandrakes, belladonna, and henbane. Once consumed, this beverage created a big high that made people act really wild and crazy. This behavior contributed to witch burnings during that time period. In the current year, several indigenous cultures in North America and Mexico use these plants to produce a trip to obtain good luck, divine disease, detect curses, or find stolen or lost objects. For the indigenous cultures known as the Tauramas and the Ramamuri, which I may be butchering the names of, the plants are called Rikakuri. It is believed by these cultures that these plants carry a soul and will of their own, and can only be used by shamans who employ them for medicine and ritual purposes. As such, most of these indigenous tribes fear and avoid physical contact with this plant. Still, another culture called the Yaqui culture uses this plant to alleviate childbirth pains. But still, the most common use by indigenous folk is to induce visions to diagnose disease. In another ritual by another culture, the Tura is used to reduce female libido and as a cleanse for those forced into prostitution. Since the extract of this plant is tasteless, in some tribes, females use this plant to stun males so they can have their way with them. Now let's get into the really dark stuff. What is coming up next comes from the paper I referenced, as well as a lecture by one of my university profs who covered Datura in medicinal plants. One of the nasty things about Datura is that it's a mind control plant, essentially. 
It produces a chemical called scrolimpila, a name I may be butchering, which has been used as a means of sex trafficking, unwilling prostitutes, mind controlling people to clean out their bank accounts and give their money to the burglars in question, and it was also used extensively by cartels to knock out pursuers so they can make a quick getaway. The effect of this chemical is a loss of free will, a very near trance-like state, and a drowsiness followed by amnesia afterwards. Particularly nasty stuff. It has also been used as a recreational drug to get a cheap high. Unfortunately, the difference between a lethal dose and a safe dose is a very slim margin, and the concentration of the hallucinogenic ingredients varies from plant to plant, making the use of this plant as a drug even more dangerous. To end this video on a more positive note, a 2008 study showed that when organophosphate, a type of insecticide, was administered to spray dolly rats, and then these were administered with scorpulinum from Datura, it increased the survival rate of organophosphate poisoning within these sprayed dolly rats. This may suggest that in the future, Datura could be used to treat organophosphate poisoning, but these are just preliminary tests, and there's quite a few limitations to this study. A pre-exposure model, which is what was used for the test, better described as a test where the treatment is administered before the poison, may be different than a situation where the person is poisoned first, then treated. And further tests should be done to deal with the possibility that a post-exposure method may not work. This test did not evaluate the side effects that may happen during the treatment as well, both long-term and short-term. They also did not test doses. As such, it would be unwise to draw any firm conclusions from this paper. Well, that about covers everything. Thank you for watching.